Hey, what's going on everybody? Welcome back to your JavaScript tutorial series. This video, we're gonna be talking about exception handling using try and catch. Now, be sure to check out our sponsor, Dev Mountain. Are you looking for a JavaScript web development bootcamp? What about an iOS bootcamp? Dev Mountain offers classes online and in person with housing at no additional cost. Learn how to build real world applications and get a job in the industry through Dev Mountain's career centric program. Whether it's web development, iOS, user experience, or quality assurance, Dev Mountain has a class for you. Let them know I sent you their way and they'll give you $250 off the tuition. Link in the description. Now I have here the Mozilla developer documents for JavaScript. This is a pretty good resource if you want to know all the details on try catch, but uh, it's, it's a little bit much. So we're just going to start with the, the basics. And if you want a little bit more, you can come here into this control flow and error handling document. So to basically describe the topic, error handling is obviously handling some error. Now, whenever you can, you should prefer control flow over error handling. So for example, if you have some form and someone spells something wrong or puts some incorrect data, you can handle that using control flow, which as a reminder, control flow is just if statements, switches, loops, and so forth. Alternatively, you can throw an error and handle that error, which would be the error handling route. The preference is to use control flow, but you will see some people using error handling as if it's control flow, which isn't really recommended. Basically, you should only really use error handling for things that are exceptional, things you're not really entirely sure how to handle using if statements. The majority of the time though, you're not gonna have to worry a whole lot about it because you can look for various cases using conditionals inside of if statements and basically catch any cases. But if we're in the situation where, you know, your program is not even going to be able to continue or something really unexpected happened, well, in that situation, you might want to do a throw statement and use error handling. But let's just get into some code for this and stop blabbering about the documentation here. So let's just clean off what we had from the previous video. If you're following along, we'll start fresh, do a refresh here, and we're back to nothing. Go to the console. And here's what I want to do. I want to execute a, a statement that doesn't exist, such as this. When we do a refresh, look at this. We get an error. So this here is also known as an exception. You may also hear this as a runtime error because it happens when you're running the program. Now, how do you deal with something like this? You can wrap it in what's known as a try block. So it looks like this. Put try and then curly braces like so. Now we can't just have the try here. We also have to have a catch, something like this. And then there is also a finally, which will look like so. Catch will catch the exception. So if something goes wrong, and finally, we'll execute some code no matter what. So whether there's an error or not, finally is going to execute. Just to show you guys this, we'll do a console log, and we'll put test, do a refresh, look, it says test. If there's no error, do a refresh, we still have test. We can even get rid of the catch section, as long as we have a finally section. You can see in this situation, it still works. Do a refresh with that error there, and you can see we still get test as the output. So it attempts to execute this, doesn't work, goes to the finally, console logs this, and there's no point in the future where this thing is caught, so it says uncaught reference error. So what we'll do is we will add a catch section here, and we'll just put a console log. Now when we do a refresh, we get catch and then test. Now you can actually have an argument to catch and you can give it a name, we'll just call it E, and this is going to be the information about the exception. So what we can do is we can just console log E, do a refresh, and look at that. Here is the, the error that we got. So to sum up what I was saying, anything inside of the catch will only execute if there is an exception, such as this. Finally, we'll execute either way. Anything after the entire try is not guaranteed to execute. So for example, if we do a console log here and just say after, and we get rid of this catch. When I do a refresh, you can see we get that error and nothing after is executed. So putting the important stuff in the finally is a way to guarantee that it gets executed. Now you can also throw your own exceptions of various types. So let's just do that. So let's clean this out. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a function. And in here, we're just going to throw, we're going to throw an object and it's going to have a property error with the value tis broke. And it's going to have a code and we'll just give it the value negative one. All right, awesome. Now what we can do is we could say try, and inside of here we can call do something, and then we can have a catch E. We can console log the E, and just say error, 
and then we can say finally and here we'll just say uh, I don't know whatever you want like so now when we do a refresh look at that we get an error and then it says wrapping things up so if something terrible happens that we can't easily recover from we have the option of throwing an error and ultimately having it caught by a try catch block or just having an uncaught error exception. In that situation, it's gonna look something like this. Do something, and we'll just get rid of all this. Here, we'll just get an error, like so, uncaught. Now, another thing you can do is you can actually say, throw new error. And you see we have error in capital letters here. So this is a special constructor that's going to create an error for us. There are all kinds of different error objects we can use by calling various constructors, which is found inside of this documentation that I showed you earlier. So inside of the exception handling statements, we can go into ECMAScript exceptions and look at all these. The one we just created is the generic error constructor, but here are all kinds of different variations. So if you want to basically build off of something that's already been defined, you can use these constructors to your benefit. Now there's also something known as DOM exceptions, D-O-M exceptions. These can be thrown when doing various DOM work, which we'll be getting into soon, but you can see those in the documentation by going back and going to DOM exception. Now this is just one constructor, DOM exception, but it has a name property, and then there's a bunch of different names that are available to us. So here's how we would describe the error. So that's all I have to say about exceptions. Again, I just wanted to emphasize that exceptions are used for exceptional things. They're not really meant to be used all of the time instead of using if statements. When you throw an exception, it's like saying, oh crap, that's something we were hoping didn't happen. Yeah, it just happened. So that's how you should use exceptions. All right, so that's all I got for you guys in this video. In the next video, we're gonna start talking about object-oriented JavaScript. It's gonna be a whole lot of fun. I'm pretty excited for that. So please be sure to subscribe and I'll see you guys then.